Welcome to the Paula Center. My name is Amy Logan and I serve as a lector here. If this is your first time visiting us or if it's your first time in a long time, welcome. We're very happy to have you here with us. We also want to welcome everyone who's joining us online this morning. Before we begin our celebration, please take a moment to check that your electronic devices are either on silent mode or turned off. Thank you for your cooperation. At our masses at the Paula Center, we celebrate that we are a Catholic community committed to healing, reconciliation, and justice. We gather around the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist to be nourished and transformed by what we receive. Today's Mass is being offered for Florence Colangelo. So that there may be no strangers among us, I invite you to stand and greet those around you, especially someone you might not already know. Joy of 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, let us ask God to bless this water which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May it remind us of our commitment to follow the risen Lord as faithful disciples. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy for through water you freed your people from slavery and you quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who at Easter have received their baptism. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through this celebration of the Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the eternal banquet in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Oops, go ahead. Glory, I forgot. Go. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of lasting love, fulfill your plan of salvation to gather into one fold the peoples of the whole world. Let everyone on earth recognize your Christ as the good shepherd who freely lays down his life for all to take it up again in power. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, the resurrection and the life who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under the heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord 
A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, see what love God has bestowed on us that we may be called children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know God. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like God, for we shall see God as God is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to you. Jesus said I am the good shepherd a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep a hired person who's not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because that one works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also, I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a tour guide at the Kennedy Library back in the late 70s, early 80s, the curator of the uh, library, his name was David Powers. Dave Powers was a personal friend of President Kennedy, a Charlestown native, and uh, he would come in for special guests if there was VIPs or whatever, and he would give a little talk uh, just before the film that we would introduce the whole life of JFK and his presidency. He 
do this little talk and he talked about how overwhelmed he and so many people felt, especially family and friends, of course, of President Kennedy after his assassination. And he always ended his talk with a part of a poem from Thomas Osborne. And this is called Lament for Owen Roe O'Neill. Owen Roe O'Neill was a brave warrior who during the 17th century uprising against Cromwell and his soldiers, he died. He was poisoned actually uh, by Cromwell's soldiers. And the end of the poem was, and he did this in his uh, JFK impersonation too. Sheep without a shepherd, when the snow shuts out the sky, oh, why did you leave us? Oh, why did you die? Those of us who live in the world today, uh, we can be excused for feeling a bit like sheep without a shepherd sometimes, particularly when we watch the news, listen to the news, this world of instant communication. We know everything that's going on all over the planet, and it often leads us to a sense of despair even at times, uh, anxiety for sure, and fears, worries. The church gives us this passage from the 10th chapter in John's Gospel today. Here we are in the fourth Sunday the beginning the fourth week of the Easter season, because there's a sense that the church knows we need reminding that the world, yes, is fraught with danger and violence and uncertainty, just as it was at the time of those disciples who after the resurrection were still quite afraid. There's a sense that even with that, we need to be reminded that Jesus willingly died as the good shepherd willingly laid down his life for his sheep and that he would take up his life again. And here we have what we call, or some call, the universal pattern of life. In church, we call it the Paschal mystery, this life that involves dying and rising. It seems that this is the way that God has intended life. Jesus said, this is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. Being out there in the world of their time was a very frightening thing for the early church. From the resurrection accounts, we know that the church feared their neighbors and this passage again was meant to remind us that the word made flesh, that God who for a little while took on our human body, that he'll lead us from this field of danger to another pasture of safety. In John's gospel, we hear Jesus say a number of statements that uh, scripture scholars call the ego ami, uh, ego ami is the Greek for I am statements. I am statements reflect this power of the Lord. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the sheep gate. I am today the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine, and you are the branches. John's Jesus was letting those first century and early second century, actually, uh, Jewish believers and people who are Gentiles as well, but Jewish particularly, because they were familiar with God's spoken word in his own definition of himself, when back with in Exodus, Moses confronts God at the burning bush and God speaks his word of I am as an identification. This will help people to know who Jesus really is. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This power, we believe, 
has been given to all believers through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, Jesus has the power to take up his life again, and he takes it up in a mystical way through his believers. In John's account of the Passion, that's read every Good Friday, sung in some cases. It's the beloved, the unnamed disciple, the one Jesus loves, believed to be the author of John's gospel, the author of the community, the founder of the community. It's this one who then acts like the good shepherd. The first one to take up the crozier of the good shepherd who's willing to die for the church, the sheep. This is John. John acts like the good shepherd. He stays with Jesus after his arrest. Peter doesn't. Now, there was obviously some uh, friction among the churches, those who kind of follow Peter's office more. John's community is a little different, comes a little later, And it shows in this reflection, they're very egalitarian. Power is shared, huh? In the synoptic gospels, we hear Jesus telling Peter, you have the power to forgive sins, right? But in John's gospel, after the resurrection, we heard this gospel account where Jesus comes to them and wishes them peace, shalom. You have the power, all of you, to forgive sins. So here we have this conflict among the church, perhaps, but regardless of that, Peter doesn't act like a good shepherd in John's gospel, does he? Peter runs away like one of those hired shepherds, someone who has no real connection to the sheep. But the beloved, on the night of Jesus' arrest, he risks his life going right into the house of Caiaphas, in the meeting that Jesus has with the high priests and the chief leaders. It is the unnamed, the the one who is loved but unnamed uh, disciple who tells the maid to open the gate. The only other time we see the word gate in the scripture is I am the gate, I am the sheep gate. But open up the gate to let Peter inside. This ability to be a good shepherd has been carried on over the centuries by leaders of the church as well as ordinary people. And it continues in our own day. One of our great saints that we admire here at the Paulus Center, we dedicate the alcove over here to the martyrs, Oscar Romero and others of El Salvador. Oscar Romero said just before his impending death, If God accepts the sacrifice of my life, may my death be for the freedom of my people. A bishop will die, but the church of God, which is the people, will never perish. I do not believe in death without resurrection. If they kill me, I will rise again in the people of El Salvador. Where did Romero's courage come from? Where did the beloved get his courage? They got it from their knowledge that they were loved by Jesus, the good shepherd. Peter did not feel that love. But later in John's gospel, there's that beautiful scene after the resurrection, right? Where Jesus is on the shore and Peter jumps in and realizes the unnamed Disciple says, it's the Lord, and Peter jumps right in, and they have a conversation. And Jesus very beautifully, very gracefully asks him three times, do you love me, Peter? Giving Peter that opportunity to take back his three-time denial of Jesus. After this, Peter, receiving the spirit, receiving the courage, He goes out, as we heard in our first reading today, in the Acts, and he confronts directly to the face of the Sanhedrin. You people killed Jesus, our Messiah. Wow, what a change. 
What a difference knowing one is loved by God can make. Every one of us has received the Holy Spirit. We're capable of the same thing. Each one of us knows and sees the love that God has bestowed on us in letting us be called children of God, as we heard in our second reading. So in turn then, it makes sense that like John and Peter, we too are to become good shepherds as well. Now, many of you have been congratulating me lately. Rich has given an announcement to the community that he's leaving and I'm going to be staying. Well, I guess, thank you, but I don't know. You don't know yet, do you? Oh, we'll see. My role here, as I see it, is to work with you, my fellow shepherds. We're to sacrifice our comforts to help bring this community of believers living in a world of fear and danger at times to the life of God, embracing the universal pattern of sacrifice, of dying in order for new life to come to us. We remember ourselves every week in this broken body and spilled blood. And in coming together, we take up our life again. My dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we've been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Together, we now stand to profess our faith by renewing our baptismal promises. So I ask all of you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamor of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, the ruler of sin and darkness? I do. Do you reject, do, sorry, do you believe? <laughs> do you believe in God, the almighty creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We believe that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, accepts us unconditionally and guides us on the right path. With confidence and gratitude, we turn to our loving and merciful God in prayer. Our response is, hear our prayer. For those who minister in the church, that they may draw strength and inspiration from the Good Shepherd, model in word and deed Christ's dedication to the children of God, and serve their communities with the heart of the Good Shepherd. God of our salvation, Amen. for leaders of nations, that God will give them a heart like the Good Shepherd, compassion toward those who are suffering, and wisdom to develop policies that stem from genuine concern for the well being of all those entrusted to their care. God of our salvation, Amen. for the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and all who struggle with life's basic necessities, that God will open new ways for the more fortunate among us to provide for their needs and bring them hope. 
God of our salvation. For this Paula Center community, that following the example of the Good Shepherd, we may seek to be guides, protectors, healers, peacemakers, and caregivers in our communities and in society. God of our salvation, for all present here, that we may each truly live in the Easter spirit and be grateful for the new life given to us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. God of our salvation. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for your constant loving care. We ask that you accept these prayers and bring all for whom we have prayed your blessings of love, joy, and peace. We ask this in the name of the one true shepherd, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we prepare our altar. We want to thank you for your generosity in the offertory today. The Paul Center receives no outside funding, so our, our entire operation, our entire operating budget comes from you. As a community that is committed to serving others, 5% of our annual offertory is equally divided among 52 charitable organizations whose missions are aligned with our own. So this weekend, we raise up one of those, and that's Habitat for Humanity in Greater Boston. You may well know this group, very well known, organization dedicated to building simple, low-cost homes and uh, by forming partnerships with low-income families uh, in need of decent and affordable housing. We have the QR code on the back of the pews if you're visiting. If you would like to give a donation in a quick way like that, please know all the donations go directly to our general operating budget. Thank you so much for your assistance and your generosity. my man. 
Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that these our gifts, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed through Christ the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. give you praise, God most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care so that in serving you alone, almighty God, we might have stewardship over all creatures. Even when through disobedience we lost your friendship, you didn't abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered covenants to us and through the prophets you taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, God most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. 
so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, the spirit might sanctify creation to the fullest. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, make this same Holy Spirit, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an everlasting covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, God most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, Jesus gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Almighty God, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, on the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that we may be gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit and become truly a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, Remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the men and women who serve you in your church. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ. Remember all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful God, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles, St. Paul the Apostle, and all the saints, there with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through Christ and with Christ and in Christ O God Almighty in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever With confidence now, we pray together the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive our those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer those around us a gesture, a sign of Christ's peace. before we all receive communion, um, we have started, as you know, uh, sharing the cup and uh, the blood of Christ. However, it came to our attention this week that we have a number of young people who never received the blood of Christ because it was during COVID that they received Holy Communion. And this went on for four years, 2020, 2021, 22, 23. So, if I just may interject for a moment here, for those of you who have never received from the cup and you would like to partake, or if you do not want to partake, here's what we do. After the cup will be placed here in this area or upstairs in the balcony, what you can do after you receive the body of Christ is you consume that first, and then you go over to the cup. If you do not wish to receive from the cup, you just fold your arms and, and do a little bow to show reverence to the blood of Jesus, the blood of Christ, okay? Now, if you would like to receive, you're welcome to do that. You will be given the cup. You will hold it carefully and place it to your lips and drink just a little bit, okay? And then give it back to the communion minister. So that's what, something I wanted to say. And the last thing, if I, if I might, for all of us, we heard Jesus say, no one takes my life from me. I give it. Please, when you approach your Eucharistic communion, do not grab Jesus. No one takes the Lord. You receive the Lord. So please put your hands out in a lovely gesture. You hold your hand, one hand under the other, in the sign of a throne for the Lord Jesus, and we'll place that on you. 
Thank you so much. So behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to be should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed to be. 
Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bonjour. Bonjour. We are just one week away from our big event, the Paula Center's 41st auction, uh, Olympics in Paris, and evening soiree. And we have so many great items for you to bid on. Uh, there's a sneak peek in the bulletin, and you can also look online for fuller descriptions. Um, if you're not able to join us, you can bid online by emailing us. There's information in the missive, in the bulletin, and online. And we really encourage you this week to check with your friends and family to see if you 
can coordinate to get one of the vacation homes or meals, because there's a lot of really great um, items that we have in there. We've sold over 160 tickets, so it really promises to be a fun evening with a delicious meal, a dessert auction, um, and gathering um, together, which I think is really probably the best part. And if you'd like to buy tickets, we'll be in the lobby. You can still get them online or from Sal in the office during the week. Uh, we're really grateful for all the support that we've received, and we can't wait to see you on Saturday. Thank you. Merci. Friends, just a few more announcements. Today is our fourth and final intergenerational event downstairs, immediately following this mass. This morning we have the Creation Care Ministry who is hosting, so please join us for information on how to take care of our beautiful earth and why that matters to us. We'll also talk about the um, current bottle bill that's up in the State House and learn about how we can all do better with plastic. Our community-wide potluck dinner is tonight at 6 in the third floor library. If you'd like to join us, just whip up a dish and show up. We'd be happy to see you. And the annual Walk for Hunger is Sunday, uh, May 5th. So please join us right outside of the doors here at 8.30 a.m. if you want to walk with the Wednesday Night Supper Club and with the Fret families. We all walk together. We'll have a blessing, and then we'll go over to the start of the walk. And it's only three laps around the common, so it's hopefully easy for everyone. And then please join us for the 10 a.m. Mass afterwards. Thank you. Susan, one question. You mentioned 6 p.m. tonight. Is it after the 6 p.m. Oh, mass? Oh, I'm sorry. It's Is after it? the 6 p.m. mass. Okay. It's not at 6. Just it's at sure. 7, yes. Thanks. Great. <laughs> no, that's great. And lastly, we always have a tradition here of welcoming people who might be visiting us here for the first time or um, way uh, back after a long absence. So we'd like to say hi to you and ask you to say hi to us if you would like to. Um, we ask if you're able to stand. That's helpful to hear and see you better. Uh, and just say your first name and where you're from. Um, so over here, they're pointing. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. You are from Argentina, and this is your daughter, Eugenia. And your first name? Teresa. Teresa. Welcome, Teresa. Bienvenido. Anybody else? Hi, folks. Hi, from New York City. Hi, from New York City. What's your first name? Marie. Hi, Marie. Hey, Rob. Nice to have you. Welcome. You. Great. Anybody else in this area? Yeah, hi. Hey. Where do you go to school, Isabel? Nice. Okay. Hi. Awesome. Nice to have you both. Thanks for joining us. Anybody else on this side before I go to the other side? I'm going to the other side. I'm going to the dark side over here. Here we go. Hi. <laughs> ha ha. Hi. Awesome, Paul. Welcome. Good to have you. And anybody else on the side here? And upstairs. Let's not forget upstairs. Anybody want to say hello upstairs? Well, let's welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Through the resurrection of Jesus, you have been redeemed and made children of God. May God bless you with joy. The Redeemer has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit everlasting life. By faith you rose with Christ in baptism. May your lives be holy so that you will be united with him forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.
Darkness vanishes in the light. 